Welcome back to my channel. Look what I got. Ta -da! I got a new iPad today. I'm so excited. Probably one of the reasons why I'm super excited about receiving this today is because I didn't expect it to arrive so soon. I've ordered it last week and then the whole of New Zealand went into lockdown and they said they were only going to deliver essential parcels. But I got my iPad today, so it really feels like Christmas. I'm so excited to do the unboxing of this iPad. Now, look how pretty it is. Even the packaging, doesn't it look amazing? This is really, really cool. I'm actually gonna try painting this and procreate once the iPad is open. This is very, very inspirational. And then I also got a new Apple Pencil. We're gonna unbox this one as well. And I also got the iPad Smart Folio Black. My previous one was black as well, and I really liked it, so I got the black one again. So we're gonna unbox all of these right now but let's let's start with the ipad wow oh, this is so exciting all right let's open this up Here it is, the brand new 2020 iPad Pro. I decided to go for the 12.9 inch 512 gigabyte version again, cellular as well, which is the same as my 2018 iPad. I chose not to get the one terabyte storage version, mainly because of the price difference. Right at this time, I didn't want to spend the extra money and also my 2018 iPad Pro still has 120 gigabytes of storage free. Oh, and I also got space gray again. I very briefly considered getting silver and also the white cover, but then I decided that I'm not bored with gray and black yet, so I went for the same color combo again. Also, when looking at my 2017 iPad Pro, which I have here, You'll notice how that white cover is not exactly white anymore. It has these black marks everywhere from putting it into my handbag every day. So the darker colors are definitely better if you have a black handbag. The new 2020 iPad Pro also comes with an 11 inch screen, but I always recommend to get the bigger screen that you can afford because in my mind, having a bigger screen makes a huge difference to my iPad lettering enjoyment. So now you're probably asking, why did you get a new iPad if everything's the same? Well, the main reason for me is performance. Using Procreate has become a bit of a chore, especially opening up and switching canvases. So I'm hoping that the new Apple A12 Bionic chip will make a difference. This iPad also has six gigabytes of RAM instead of four gigabytes, which might help for certain applications. So there is hope. I will definitely let you know how much faster it is in real life once I have used it for a bit. You can see that the design of the iPad is exactly the same as the previous one. This is my old one and this is my new one. But really obvious is that the new iPad now has two cameras. There is a 12 megapixel wide angle camera and also a 10 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. And with the two camera setup comes a new LiDAR scanner. This actually sounds like a lot of fun to me and definitely something I'm going to try out. One of the applications I can think of already is projecting my artwork onto my wall or onto my shelf behind me so I can see what it would look like and to create possible mock-ups. What's also new is the new microphone system for capturing super clean audio and then there is four speakers included for an immersive sound experience. 
I've actually always liked the iPad Pro speakers, so I'm very curious to find out if they sound better than the speakers of the old iPad. And another new feature is Wi-Fi 6, which is promising to be up to 40% faster and apparently uses less battery as well. Having said that, you will need a Wi-Fi 6 router to take advantage of this. All right, and now it's time to turn the iPad on. And there it is. So now instead of setting this iPad up as a new iPad, I'm actually going to restore it from my iTunes backup. And this is very, very important, especially if you're a Procreate user. You have to have an iTunes backup on your computer to restore the iPad from. Otherwise, you won't have all your brushes and canvases transferred to the new iPad. It's so tempting to skip this step because it actually takes a long time. But please, please don't do that. It took about eight hours to back up my old iPad and it will probably take another eight hours for this one to restore but this is still much faster and more automated than copying all your canvases and brushes manually to the new iPad. I usually let it happen overnight so it actually doesn't bother me too much. So now we have the iPad restored from backup. This is the 2018 iPad and this is the 2020 iPad. And the whole process took about six hours to restore, so it wasn't too bad. I let it happen overnight. And you can see now the benefit really of having this backup on iTunes is that both iPads are absolutely identical. I've got all the same apps, I have the same background. And I don't know about you, but I can be a little bit OCD when it comes to these things. I really like to have my icons in the right place on the iPad which is really good. I was also going to have a quick look at the screens but unfortunately they are not directly comparable because the 2018 iPad has a paper-like screen protector and the 2020 iPad doesn't have a screen protector yet and the reason for that is is that I haven't received a new one yet but I will definitely put a paper-like screen protector on my new iPad as soon as it arrives. But now let's do that performance test because really that's what I'm super curious about is the 2020 iPad really faster than the 2018 iPad now of course we could run bench tests and run some artificial programs to tell us that maybe this processor is a little bit faster than that one but it doesn't really matter really what matters to me is that real life performance having my apps that I use every day and see how they perform in comparison so now what I've done for this test I've wiped the memory of both iPads so that we can compare them directly side by side we're going to start up the Procreate app both at the same time and then we're going to do some navigation we're going to open some canvases just to see which iPad is faster all right here we go so we're going to tap the Procreate icon exactly at the same time and then see what happens so both apps now load into memory and the 2020 iPad wins ever so slightly this was a little bit faster so now let's open one of our stacks again one two three oh, I think this was very very similar all right and now let's open a canvas again one two three now I felt this iPad was ever so slightly faster so now let's go back to the gallery one two three And in this test, the clear winner was the 2020 iPad. So I think we can conclude here that the new iPad is indeed a little bit faster. So maybe let's do one final test. This one here is actually a really big canvas. So let's open this. One, two, three. So this opens exactly at the same time. And then let's go back to the gallery. One, two, three. and the 2020 iPad wins again. So I think we can tell now really that the 2020 iPad is a little bit faster when it comes to working with Procreate. Of course, it's not a massive difference, but I'm, I'm happy with a little speed improvement. So of course, now these tests were just really, really brief tests, sort of the first glance, and I will be doing a lot more testing in the upcoming weeks, and I'll definitely give you an update on how I go with the new iPad. So now the question is, should you get the new iPad? And I have a few scenarios in my mind 
that I want to explain to you depending on the current iPad that you have. You can see here I've got a whole pile of iPads so let's start at the top and then work ourselves down. So let's start with the scenario that you don't currently have an iPad and then yes absolutely I do recommend the brand new iPad. I think it's a fantastic device and you should absolutely get it. I also think that 12.9 inch screen size is fantastic. I've said this in all my previous review videos I don't think it's too big. So yes absolutely go for the brand new 12.9 inch 2020 iPad Pro. Alright so now let's look at the other iPad. So the top one here that I have this is a very old iPad mini. I think this is the fourth generation. It doesn't have a retina screen. It doesn't work with an Apple Pencil. If you have one of these types of iPads, any iPad that doesn't work with an Apple Pencil, I do think you should upgrade to the latest iPad Pro because it works with an Apple Pencil and it makes all the difference when it comes to lettering or any art project that you do. So next up we have the sixth generation iPad. This is the one that came out in 2018 and that was the first non-iPad Pro that worked with an Apple Pencil. If you have one of these at the moment you can consider upgrading to the latest iPad Pro especially if you want the bigger screen size then yes absolutely I do recommend that you go with the new iPad. Now we're moving on to the 2017 iPad Pro. This is the second generation iPad Pro. I've had this for three years. If you have one of these iPads I also think you should consider upgrading and the main reason is because of the form factor. I really like the smaller size of the new iPads much better and also the fact that you can charge the Apple Pencil directly on the iPad makes a huge difference. I haven't had any issues with my Apple Pencil not being charged since I had the 2018 iPad. So if you have one of these I definitely recommend that you should upgrade to the latest this model. So now it's getting a little bit more interesting. We're getting to that 2018 iPad Pro. This iPad is 18 months old and to be honest I don't think this is much worse than the latest iPad. So if you have one of the 2018 iPad Pros I don't think you should upgrade. I think it'll be a waste of money upgrading to the 2020 iPad. I just don't think the speed improvement warrants an upgrade right now. So if you have a 2018 iPad Pro, if you're happy with the screen size and if you're happy with the storage that you currently have don't upgrade. And there you have it. I really hope this was helpful. I hope this helped you decide whether or not you want to get a new iPad. If you have any more questions or if you would like any more recommendations or if there's any scenarios I haven't covered, please leave a comment down below and I will make sure to answer that and give you my best recommendation. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and family in case they can't decide whether or not they should get a new iPad. I'm also going to bloop up a couple of more videos here. So so you can continue watching and maybe get some more ideas of what you can do with your iPad once you have made a decision whether or not you want to get the new iPad. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.